Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Attaining the Second Cognition. The topic of this discussion is Stages of Cognitive Development. I use the term stages to describe cognitive development over the phrase levels of development because the word levels is indicative in most people's minds of some type of linear progression similar to the different grades in schools for instance. I address the concept of spherical thinking in my video of the same title. One must approach their cognitive advancement by learning to think spherical and break the habits of linear thinking. When you realize that the move for cognitive advancement happens on many fronts at the same time as you go through this process, then you can also understand why I use the word stages to describe your growth process instead of levels. Through the control of the Hapim virus, we have all learned to compartmentalize things into certain categories in our minds. This process of compartmentalization leads us to the false assumption that things are unrelated and separate when very often they are sublimely interrelated but not necessarily connected. Much of this compartmentalization that we do in our minds is based on our first cognition programming and we don't even realize that we are programmed to think and compartmentalize things this way. Most of us are unaware that we even compartmentalize and separate things this way in our minds. We simply do it without giving it any thought whatsoever. This habit of compartmentalizing is a major factor in developing our personal cognitive filtering system. The filters we have in place serve to sort, categorize, then compartmentalize what we think we know into our own personal mental filing systems. In a system of dualistic thinking, we judge things as good or bad based on our personal filtering system. We judge things to be one way or the other, then compartmentalize these things into separate cognitive file folders. Due to our individual programming, what is considered good or bad is not always the same from one person to the next, yet every individual uses their own filtering system to make snap judgments on situations they encounter in life and then compartmentalize these judgments into their predetermined mental file folders. Each of our individual programming filters is dependent on how we were raised, the life situations we encounter, and the cultural milieu in which we were raised. These programming filters are founded on beliefs that were plugged into us most of the time by others and not by any actions of our own cognitive decision making. We embrace these beliefs because either we were programmed with them at a young age or because others within our circles of association or cultures believe these things to be true in mass. I'm taking the time to explain all this so you can be aware of how your own cognitive filters work as well as how the programs that create these filters get embedded into the consciousness of the Hapim ego. Psychologists have figured a lot of this out, but the field of psychology offers no genuine solutions for how to reverse these programmed effects. Psychologists are just as infected with the Hapim virus as everyone else and are equally as clueless on knowing how to cure its effects than you are. To return to the topic of this discussion, as you go through the process of questioning and eroding your own beliefs, you will discover that this process is in no way linear. Each individual goes through varying stages of this process on their own, with some moving faster than others depending on how diligent they are in finding, acknowledging, and ultimately removing these program filters in their minds. Because these filters cover such a wide range of topics in our lives, we deal with them when they come up or when we intentionally unearth them through our own internal investigative and analytical processes. So how one develops is determined by many different factors and circumstances. Some people move more slowly through this process than others because they do not focus on what they are seeking to achieve more keenly than others or because they lack the knowledge to know what they are trying to do. These videos in our books are seeking to fill that gap in knowledge so people better understand exactly what it is they are trying to achieve through this process. Although many of our viewers feel that we have been all over the map in our video presentations and find themselves wondering just what we're driving at by sharing such a wide variety of information, you can be sure that there is an overall purpose behind these presentations. Every video is designed to either teach you to challenge your own predetermined and programmed thinking processes or to educate you with a different perspective through which you can reinterpret your world of perceptions and navigate your way out of the first cognition quicksand pit. 
Everything we have shared that pissed you off indicates one of your personal work areas based on your own compartmentalized thinking and embraced beliefs. We get defensive when our worldview is challenged and getting pissed off at the messenger is the Hapim virus's method of defending itself in its own world of illusion. The Hapim virus takes your natural emotions and amplifies them to feed itself as well as defend the fake world it has created around itself. Within this illusionary world are our beliefs about ourselves and those are going to be the hardest to come to terms with and change for the better through this painful growth process. Most people will utterly refuse to engage in this process at all and will therefore remain forever slaves to the symptoms and habits of this parasitic mind virus. The best way to determine your own work areas while looking within is to pay attention to what makes you react emotionally to any bit of information or any constructive criticism about some of the things you do. Being defensive and over-emotional is a sure sign of an area you need to analyze more deeply to find the root program that makes you react defensively in such a manner. Depending on how much one applies themselves to these ideas is going to determine their stage of development at any given time. There are times when the blinders come off our eyes faster than at other times. What each of you must realize is that we can only take so much destruction of our illusionary world at any given time. As we come to terms with our eroding beliefs, our minds take some time to retool and readjust to how we reinterpret this information we came into possession of. This is no different than an athlete having to take a break after a hard workout. You can't run this process full tilt for very long without some downtime after the fact to assimilate the new information and adjust your consciousness accordingly. Feeling that you can run a marathon for life is a rather foolhardy idea and your road to cognitive advancement will progress in this same manner. You will need downtime to assimilate and sometimes these down periods can run for a month or more while your soika readjusts to a new worldview before taking off on another period of advancement. Ego impatience will be your enemy in this process, so it is best to try and overcome your impatience because this process can only unfold at a certain speed for every individual. Where people often fall away from their growth path is during the doldrum or down periods when nothing is happening or they feel that nothing is happening. Simply speaking, they get bored and just give up on themselves and most rarely return to their path. They fall back into first cognition, pick up their old habits, and never grow beyond their stopping point. This is why I did the video maintaining the focus to advance. If one can't develop the focus to stay with this process, especially during the slow times or when it gets hard, they will fail in the end. You have to eat, live, and breathe this desire to advance and never let it go, especially when things get tough or slow down while you are assimilating and going through your periods of cognitive adjustment. If you lose this focus, you will fall away and forget about the process and stay exactly where you quit from a cognitive point of view. Every individual can only deal with so much destructive input at a time. Some can erode beliefs more easily than others, so speed is not the issue on the road to the second cognition as much as maintaining your focus and the determination to stay with the process without giving up on yourself. It is very easy to feel defeated and throw in the towel, especially living in an instant gratification culture that expects immediate results from everything. I ask that you be aware of this part of your personal programming, particularly if you live in the West, for this is a major contributor to impatience, and this type of impatience is an enemy of which you need to be aware. Regardless of what stage of development you may be at on this path to higher soika functioning, you are exactly where you need to be at this time. There is no better or worse. The only thing that matters is that you are doing the work at all. If you throw at the work part-time in a lackadaisical manner, then don't expect any more reward than what you put into it through your own efforts. If you go at this half-assed, you are only going to get half-assed results and you have no right to bitch because you are not moving yourself forward. Admittedly, we all feel frustration on this path because we all have ideas about what we think this process is going to provide us. Every one of these expectations will leave you wanting in the end, for first cognition expectations cannot remotely comprehend what the second cognition provides. Just as with any other Hapim illusion, your expectations are also simply illusions that the Hapim creates in your mind to empower itself through deception. 
you would be wise to approach this process without predetermined expectations because those expectations will never come to be. I want to give you an example from our own paths. When I began writing my books just over three years ago, Gemma and I had been in one of those downtime periods that lasted almost two years. Did we whine and complain about it? You betcha. Then one day everything shifted into place and I began writing the books. Everything in the books was a compilation of everything we'd experienced on our path up until that point in time. As one book was finished, and sometimes before, I would have the inspiration for the next one. Most of the information contained therein was still information that I had acquired along my path, but my understanding of it and how to relate it to others was a realization that happened once I felt the push to write the material. When we began collaborating on the older videos on this channel, the writing process happened quickly. I wrote most of the scripts for our older videos as fast as three or four a week for months, and the collaborations were added and then it took time to record the videos to present. Some of the videos were pushes prompted in the middle of this time, so some scripts were done sooner than others, but a majority of them were written months in advance of when they were presented. A lot of people have commented that although our older material was great, they are loving the new direction that we are taking with our channel here, with the new material being more in-depth. We didn't utilize any of the downtime to write during our hiatus until we started producing videos over on our channel. We only made the decision to write scripts again a few weeks ago, and as you can see, we produced 11 videos so far, and we have other scripts written or being written as we speak. Gemma said that she got a push at the end of last year to begin recording her own scripts, but every time she sat down to write, nothing would happen. When she wasn't sitting at her computer, she would have all these thoughts and ideas come to her that she thought would be great information to share with others. But as soon as she would sit down to write, the words just wouldn't come. As you notice now, she's not having any difficulties writing. The assimilation time is far more important from our experience than the information collection stage because the assimilation stage is where the information coalesces in your mind and the understanding and realizations begin to happen. The information we are sharing now may seem more detailed and better than what was in our past videos, but if you review the past videos we reference in our material now to tie them together, you will see that they aren't offering new information. We are offering expanded information from what we've already presented, and the expansion shows you our own development along our path from our assimilation downtime. As you move yourself through your stages on your own path, revisiting the material is where you will know how much you've expanded your own awareness because it will probably make more sense now than it did when you originally visited the material. Although our methods in presenting the wide variety of subject matter that we have may seem haphazard to you, there is a purpose behind it all. Before we can start to step out of the first cognition illusion, it is helpful to find material that rattles the rigid bars of first cognition perceptions. An individual needs to be shook up by realizations or revelations and ideas they have not encountered before in order to loosen the stranglehold the virus and its habits have on our minds. Each of these videos we created is designed to either shake that illusionary world to its core or to provide explanations on how to fix it once the stranglehold starts to loosen on your consciousness. So we are presenting a multi-pronged approach to your development whereby we are loosening the foundations of what you thought reality was as well as providing tools for understanding that should guide you through the cognitive dissonance that comes about as a result of the illusions being destroyed. Again, this is part of the learning spherical thinking. Every ego thinks that they can handle the truth, that you can tell them anything and they are ready to run with a ball. I have personally heard this from so many people I have worked with in the past only to see most of them cower in the face of the truth revealed. Regardless of what your ego may tell you, you are not remotely ready for all this information in one shot. No one is. I wasn't and neither are you. To think such things is only ego bravado. The human psyche under control of the Hapim virus can fracture and break when too much information is presented to shatter its perceptual world completely. No one operating in ego is as ready for this as their Hapim ego may have convinced them that they are. There are no exceptions to this rule, and no, I don't make the rules, but it is how this process functions. Each of us can only deal with the destruction of so many cognitive illusions and still keep our mental equilibrium. 
It is not only an impossibility to know everything at once, but to expect to do so is a foolhardy endeavor at best, and only a hapim ego can inflate itself to believe such a thing is possible. Yet it is the ego itself that will crumble, sometimes into insanity, if its world of illusions were to disappear in an instant. We have left the comment sections open on these new videos to invite questions where those interested may feel they need clarification of the ideas we present. This is Endel Beal, and until next time, stay the course and don't give up on yourself.